So it's been a little bit, and I've had some time to sit on this and think about it, but it's finally time I discussed Lancelot. I made a video over the summer about the potential of Tristan's power and how terrifying his full potential could actually be, but that was before we found out how much stronger Lancelot himself was than Tristan with full demon mark mode, which is insane to think about. I originally thought that Lancelot and, L and Tristan were about evenly parred. Strength ab upon equal playing field. Maybe slightly stronger than the other. There was no clear confirmation until his fight with Arthur in chapter 79 and 80. That it was the tipping point for a lot of people on who was stronger between Tristan and Lancelot. And I know that there were people kind of questioning why is Lancelot so strong? This kind of takes away a lot of the tension for the story with Arthur being the main villain and Lancelot seemingly, seemingly being able to basically take him down and make him bleed with not much effort where Meliodas seemed to be trying in his fight right beforehand. Which, if you want my thoughts on if Meliodas could have been able to beat Arthur or push him away, I have a video in the title card above if you want to take a look at it. I like that video. I feel like I could have done a bit more with it, but overall, I think I got my general point across. But right now, a lot of people have complained that Arthur basically being tossed around and injured by Lancelot, one of the Fornets of the Apocalypse, seems to be watering down or making Arthur less of a threat than he's been built up to be. But I'm going to go over in this video why this is actually the case, with, aside from Arthurian legend reasons that Nakba takes inspiration from, into inverse reasons why Lancelot is actually as strong as he is. I'll probably make an Arthur video in general at some point before the end of the year. I promise you I will do that. If not, it'll be the beginning of next year, because there's a lot of things I want to consider for that. But if you like these discussion videos on the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really, really does help, and it shows that you guys like the Fortnite content on the channel. I want to do more discussion videos like this, so just generally interacting and watching the video goes a long way in showing that you guys want to see me continue doing this. But let's hit that intro and get right into the video. So Lancelot, why is he so strong? Well, let's just go over really quickly the Arthurian legend basis for this. In Arthurian legend, it has been stated a lot, primarily, that Lancelot is supposed to be canonically stronger than Arthur in these Arthurian legends. Obviously, there are a bunch of different interpretations of Arthurian legend and, you know, the Knights of the Round Table in general. But a core thing that I've seen a lot from either comments or people trying to break down this is the fact that Lancelot in these legends is supposed to be a stronger knight or fighter than Arthur himself, who is basically literally the title character of these legends. So that we can mark down, okay, Lancelot is supposed to be stronger than Arthur based off of that. But this is a shonen story, so why are we seeing him being stronger than Arthur right now? So there actually is a lot of reason to why Lancelot is so strong in this main arc in particular, but we're gonna go over like what Lancelot has done in the, in the series so far on screen and technically off screen that shows just how strong he is and why he became so strong so let's just go all the way back to the zastana arc we did not get the reveal of lancelot at that point lancelot was in the form of sin the fox he was literally just a guide for percival and gang to take them to leonis so you can learn more about the four knights and why Lan and why percival is one of them in that arc Ironside got together the Coffin of Eternal Darkness using a spell, from what I can tell, a Chaos type spell to use the Coffin of Eternal Darkness. I'm still not entirely sure what that is and I'll probably just make a video next year on the Coffin of Eternal Darkness as a whole on what its role is going to play when I make an Arthur video because I think that in Arthur is probably going to play a bigger role in the end game of the story because I doubt we're bringing, getting reintroduced to the Coffin of Eternal Darkness for that one arc in particular and giving a piece of it to Percival as his personal sword, where it's not where not to be an actual story and plot device for the future. But that's again a topic for a different video entirely. In that arc, Ironside somehow brought buildings, streets, and inanimate objects to life into some of these chaotic dead that he stated, causing mayhem and trying to kill off citizens for sacrifices for the Coffin of Eternal Darkness to be activated. But in this whole arc, we saw multiple flashes of light with these chaos creatures being destroyed and killed effortlessly without us knowing what is going on all we knew was sin disappeared we know this now that lancelot was the one that took care of all of the chaotic dead 
in Sistana. And it was stated at the end of this arc, when Ironside was forced to leave by his companion Knights of Chaos, that the only people capable of taking care of the Chaotic Dead and wiping them out in this manner is someone on the level of the Seven Deadly Sins. So, at that point, Sin also stated that it was one of his forest friends that took care of the dead chaotic monsters. But that one line of dialogue goes a long way. Remember, Sin didn't reveal his identity to the crew, and no one knew Lancelot really existed. Not even among the Chaos Knights, because that's how efficient Lancelot is. So, we got a baseline. Whoever this character was, was on the level of the Seven Deadly Sins. Obviously, at the time, it literally had everyone speculating, um... This is probably Bon, I mean a fox named Sin on the level of Seven Deadly Sins. It's probably Bon or someone called a Sin member over to take care of the rest, but we know now that that is Lancelot. So at that point in the story, now going back, Lancelot is definitely on the level of the Sins. That is a baseline. And then we go on a little bit further. We see in the Entangled Forest arc where Lancelot, after revealing himself, tactfully and effortlessly took care of the Dark Talismans. Powerful Chaos Knights that were sent to just eradicate Percival and co. They have no mercy and did whatever they could to take care of Percival in game. But when Lancelot showed up and revealed his identity, he's like, training wheels are off, and then he just basically massacres them. He takes them down without any effort. So it shows, yeah, these guys are strong, but Lancelot is on a whole other playing field compared to these other knights. We don't see any more of Lancelot's feats until the fight in Leonis when Gallon and Alaskala show up. But surprisingly, Lancelot doesn't really do anything in that fight. He basically just evades, messes with people's heads, and kind of, you know, mocks the former commandments. Basically leaving Gallon to Gawain and, Tr and Percival, and they manage to defeat him. He even set things up so that Molascula would turn into a snake, and for Tristan to actually go all out for a second and take her down. Lancelot ended up having to go and fight in prison because of, you know, what's soon to be revealed as Jericho. Now, with what we know about Lancelot, he would've been able to effortlessly take down Mela Gallant if he was there. Tristan did it in Demon Mark mode, but still, Lancelot went off to fight Jericho. He wasn't trying, and it is revealed at the end of the arc after showing us Arthur versus Lancelot. Now, Lancelot had magical restrictions placed on him. So, why would he need magical restrictions placed on him? Well, this goes into, finally, why Lancelot as a whole is so strong. Because, Bon is basically like the strongest human imaginable. He is basically like an evolved human, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with literal deities. Elaine is a royal fairy, and if at all possible, could could have actually been a contender for a fairy queen. Lancelot is both. He is literally a hybrid of a human and a fairy. So, obviously, he would be a lot stronger than a normal human or a normal fairy. Why I think this is the case, aside from Bond being his dad, it's because Nakba Suzuki loves Dragon Ball. We have seen this multiple times in the Seven Daily Sins, primarily with stuff like the fusion uh, into the creation of the Great Demon, power level escalations, transformations, and, you know, the power levels that we had up until, like, the final arc of the season of Seven Daily Sins. Nakama Suzuki has ma not made it very subtle that he loves Dragon Ball and that he has a big inspiration for the Seven Daily Sins for Dragon Ball. So, it kind of makes sense if Nakba wanted to go the route of hybrids having a lot more fighting potential and growth than the originals of their parents being different, you know, they're being like different, right, different species. So putting them together would make them a lot powerful. That could also explain why Tristan is going to be stronger than Meliodas as well. But again, the Dragon Ballisms in Seven Deadly Sins and Four Nights, it kind of makes sense for Lancelot overall to be stronger than Bond for by the end of the series. It's kind of like the next generation going on. But the next bit about it is actually the three years him and Jericho spent in this other dimension. We don't really get too much about it, but in this, in the Leonis arc, Jericho mentions that she and Lancelot were gone for three years. Three full years in this whole area. And Lancelot left when he was 13. He managed to escape and Jericho left. All we know is that they had to basically fight continuously to survive. And when Lancelot came back, he had unparalleled power when he came out. And this could also explain why Jericho's, Jericho has gotten a bit stronger. Definitely not going to be on the level of Lancelot, though. I'm not going to open that can of worms. But Lancelot, with the potential of him being a hybrid, having more growth potential than Bon and Elaine, put together with being in another dimension, constantly fighting, makes sense why he would grow so strong. And if we take the Dragon Ballisms again, I know I'm taking a lot from Dragon Ball, but, you know, Nakba loves Dragon Ball, so I feel like he's going to implement some, certain ideas in the story. It's very possible this other dimension could have acted like a type of different hyperbolic time chamber, where... Time flowed similarly in both in both that dimension and the dimension that 
Lancelot came from, Britannia, but his growth rate was accelerated to an absurd degree where he would grow to be a lot stronger than he would normally have been in the regular dimension due to something, some type of like vague rulings. Again, this is pure speculation, but it's been heavily implied that going there and coming back, somehow something happened that made Lancelot so strong. There's also, in the Lancelot one-shot, where it said that when Lancelot came back, he was heralded as, he was basically considered, he was considered the Prince of the Lake. So, basically giving us confirmation that Lancelot encountered the Lady of the Lake in this other dimension. And even Guinevere, in her introductory chapter, basically says this offhandedly. I know what Junior Master did at the lake. So this other dimension is most likely connected to the Lady of the Lake. And, once more, taking from Dragon Ball, which Nakaba, again, likes to do. I know people are going to be continuing to say to me, why are you comparing this to Dragon Ball so much? Well, again, Nakaba likes Dragon Ball. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. But... If he does the whole hyperbolic time chamber type deal with his other dimension, plus the Lady of the Lake maybe give, gifting some power to Lancelot, perhaps the Lady of the Lake did something to unlock Lancelot's innate potential, thus increasing his overall power and growth rate, making him by the age of 16 on the level of the Sins, or perhaps even a bit greater. Don't quote me on that because Meliodas did not have a chance to go all out or to push Arthur due to Tristan going berserk. I stated that in my Meliodas vs. Arthur video. But it's basically implied that this other dimension and potentially Lady of the Lake were basically responsible for Lancelot becoming so strong. That combined with him being a hybrid of a human and a fairy and the Dragon Ballisms that Nakba likes to take inspiration from, it does add up to why Lancelot is so strong. And it could also show why Thetis had to put magical restrictions on Lancelot. This was mentioned in chapter 81 when Thetis and Lancelot were talking in the aftermath of the battle in that one, in that one night where they were talking about Lancelot basically letting the prisoner die by Jericho. Lancelot saying that at that time I decided I couldn't lift the magical restrictions you placed on me. So, we don't know when these restrictions were placed, but... Lancelot unleashed those restrictions in, a, in that fight against Arthur. So if he did not unleash those uh, magical restraints, Arthur would have definitely beaten him by using just the bare minimum of chaos that he managed to unleash. These magical restrictions, I believe, were meant to keep Lancelot's power from overflowing to the point where it could overwhelm him. With this other dimension in mind and his insane growth potential, it's reason to believe that he, at a young age, after coming back from that dimension, he couldn't fully control his powers, and thus they needed to be suppressed. He'd still be a lot stronger than he would originally be, but his overall magical power would be very much limited. And Lancelot could unleash it whenever he felt confident. Right now, he's most likely capable of using that power of his to a very good degree, and he's very tactful, so he won't be careless in using it if he cannot fully control it, or if it'd be a detriment in the long run. Which is why he decides to use it when he had to fight Arthur, when Arthur started to use Chaos, and why he didn't use it against Jericho to save the prisoner. This is, again, this is mainly just speculation and my own little headcanon on why we needed the magical restraints. But with everything we know of right now, being stuck in another dimension and coming back stronger, the, poten the actual potential involvement of the Lady of the Lake in those three years in that other dimension, and Lancelot being a hybrid of a human and a fairy, it stands to reason that Lancelot is so strong and why it actually seems to make a lot of sense. That's not even to consider if the Four Knights are going to get their own sacred treasures at the, at the end, by the end point of the series, and that will just be a whole other animal entirely. But yeah, with all that in mind, I believe that that's why Lancelot has become so strong. The Lady of the Lake's involvement, being th stuck three years constantly fighting in another dimension for survival, him being a hybrid, Nakaba's love of Dragon Ball and kind of using that inspiration for his works, plus the Arthurian legend that this is based off of, Lancelot was meant to be this strong, if not stronger. His power is limited right now due to the idea that he has magical restrictions placed on him. That can be expanded on in the future. But that's why I think Lancelot is so strong. Based off of the context clues that we know of, Lancelot's feats and the Arthurian legend and Nakaba's tendency to get inspiration from Dragon Ball and his works. It makes a lot of sense why Lancelot is this strong. Honestly, Lancelot might not actually get any stronger. He could actually be at his tip-top shape right now, but he has to limit himself with those restrictions for some unknown reasons. But... Yeah, those are my thoughts on Lancelot being so strong. What did you guys think? Did I miss anything that could be added on to this point to further explain why Lancelot is so strong or why the restrictions were placed on him? Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. I want to do at least one more video 
involving Gawain before the year ends. So look forward to that because that was actually the second most voted thing for my videos. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help. And it shows you guys like the content on this channel. I hope to see you guys again. And I hope you all have an awesome day.